Okay, good evening and welcome to a special night edition of Ian Talina on Shulchan Aruch, Yom Gimel 213. <clears throat> this simon talks about being mostly other people in Bracha Rishon. Are you allowed to? But the yeah, evidence it works. Are you allowed to be mostly other people? You're both drinking Dr. Pepper. That was the example I gave. So according to the Ramah, you're not supposed to. However, when it comes to bread and wine, you could, as long, provided one fact. It used to be that you have to actually be leaning. Both people will be leaning. But nowadays, as long as both people are sitting. If you're sitting down, right, and you're both drinking wine, you could be mozi, but maybe you should be mozi in Lord Bergoff. And in Hamotzi. However, if you're not sitting down, you're standing up, then you shouldn't be doing that. Um, <clears throat> as opposed to other things where even if you're sitting down, it doesn't really help according to the Ramah. So it's only about bread and wine nowadays. So let's just analyze the halacha now. Is why bread and wine. When you're sitting down, you could be mostly someone like When it comes to other things, which are shahakal or poor praise, poor praise, you can't be mostly other people. So the answer is, I think, is that bread and wine, normally, when you're eating bread and wine, you don't walk around eating bread and wine. So <clears throat> the whole purpose of bracha sananin is to get you to focus on the food. So ideally, we'd like everyone to make their own bracha. Because when you make your own bracha, you're able to focus, you hold it in your right hand, you're able to focus on the food more. If I hear it from somebody else, I'm not focusing so well on the food. I'm not getting the full uh, impact of a Birchaz Hananen. So therefore, only foods where you're joining and you're going to sit together with a person, you're sitting down to a bread meal with a person, or drinking wine together. Those are types of kvias where you're sitting in one place together. So it actually helps when someone's mozi me because it conjures up in my mind that we're going to sit together, I'm going to have a good time. What are we going to have a good time? Eating bread, or eating pizza, or eating, you know, or drinking wine together. So... It actually helps me focus because it's not just eating by myself, right? When I'm sitting down to eat with somebody else, right? Bread and wine, you sit down and you're going to schmooze and you're going to have a good time together. So when you, someone else is mozi you in other bracha, it actually gives more attention to the bracha. It's not just I'm making it personally, but I'm making this bracha to enjoy the bread and wine together with this person. Other foods, right? Even if you have, you know, apples, like no one's going to sit down on apples and schmooze. You take the apple and you go walk around and do whatever you got to do. Go back to your computer or whatever and work. So... That's not, so therefore, when a person goes and is mostly someone else in the bracha of the apple, he's already thinking about leaving already, so he doesn't get the full impact of the bracha sanan, as opposed to something which is going to cause you to stay together. Maybe it's even better to be multi somebody with the bracha sanan, because it causes you to think about that you're going to sit down and eat this together with the person, and enjoy not just the food, but the conversation, which makes, obviously, the food taste better. Now, <clears throat> the halacha is, really, according to the Gemara, Pasviyayin, you have to do haseba in order to be mozi someone kachila. Leaning, talk about pesach. Leaning, you're supposed to do haseba. What is haseba? Supposed to lean to the left. <coughs> um, Tosos, which is quoted by the Shulchan Aruch, says there's no haseba nowadays. Our sitting down is like their haseba. Now I don't understand this Tosos so much because, you know, there's different types of sitting down. Sitting down on a bench. You know, if you think you go back to camp when you're younger, I don't know America. They give it, they bring these benches out. There's no back on the benches. You know, my wife says when she was younger, that's what they had in the house. They grew up, they were young kids, they had 11 kids in the family. They didn't have chairs, they had benches. So the benches has nowhere to lean. You can't, they have no backrest. There's definitely no armrest. So there's nowhere to rest. I don't think I see what it means you have to recline. You know, I heard of our Shashi Rabbi Yaakov Freeman that he actually takes a bed out for, for matzah on Pesach on the first night and reclines on a bed. I don't remember that. I went to his Seder one time, and he didn't do that, I don't think. But they said about I've heard about other people that are machmer for a say, but they just be lying on a bed. But I don't think that's, that's what it means. People, I don't think now, in the, old, the olden days, people used to recline on beds. It's not comfortable to eat reclining on bed. You know, even on a recliner. I would say if you have a backrest to your chair, that's reclining. That's what a seba means to lean on something. It's called eating to lean on this chair. To lean on, you're leaning. I have a back to this chair. This chair even though there's no armrest. And certainly if you have an armrest, right, that's also leaning, you know, you rest your arm. You know, recliners have a footrest also, an ottoman or something like that. There's a footrest. So, you know, you know, some chairs have a neck rest where they'll, they'll, they'll go up to your neck, which is also beneficial. But I think as long as there's, you know, the main part of leaning is your back. You know, it's much different to sit on a chair with a back than to sit on a bench. So that's what all the table really means. I don't think anything really changed. That's what they used to sit on. They had chairs back then. It's like we have chairs now. They didn't have. They weren't eating on recliners. Reclining, it, it, it. You can't eat like that. It's not. That's not tenable. It doesn't make sense to me. So I don't think it really anything changed. Um, so we do have a seba, and really the halacha should be a seba. That's what the Gemara says. 
So when you're eating bread and wine, if you want to be yotzi someone, someone with bread and wine, which is the halacha, um, according to the shulchanach, really only yeshiva, but it makes sure it's a yeshiva with a, a, a chair. You're both sitting in chairs, they have at least a backrest. So that's really called a seba. It's a chomer that I'm saying, but I think it makes sense. That's really what yeshiva really means, right? It has a backrest. It's really with an armrest, it's even better. Um, and that, you know, because the idea is that you're going to stay there, right? Like I explained, the reason is by passing out, you're going to stay. But you're only going to stay there if you have a comfortable seat, if you have at least a back rest. If you're sitting on a bench, you probably get up and walk over to the other side of the room or go over and talk on your phone. So you have to have a comfortable chair where you sit down and then you'll enjoy the bracha together. And that's why you're multi other person. And then for a Pesach also, I think, you know, people go crazy. But a Seba really just means getting a chair with a back. I think a back rest is okay. Lean to the side of the chair, the left, whatever. Certainly, you have an armrest. You could that definitely helps. Maybe that's what you have to have an armrest to the left. You lean to the left. That's what I think I say. But it is Ian to lean on talks about what to lean on. <laughs> really hitting on the nail today. All right. Hope you enjoyed today's share. See you in the next one.